Welcome to Healers Path House. Thank you for tuning in to season two, episode six. Are you good? That was a terrible looking face. It was the new face. Here you go, Mushi. Go ahead and eat that. So today we're going to do something a little different. So if you follow us on Instagram, well, me. I say us because she handles pretty much all the social media. But if you follow me on Instagram or on Tapped, you've seen that we have been extremely busy over the last week. We traveled to 46 different breweries in five days. And tried about 200 different beers. Now, it seems like a lot. You're probably thinking, oh, these guys are out here just drunk driving, causing danger for everybody. That is not true. We have a system. We have a commercial-grade breathalyzer. And the most that I was at was .04 on the days that we were driving. So, And that was when we got back after our last beers. So we were safe. We were completely fine. I didn't break any laws. The only laws that we broke is probably had way too much fun some of the time. And it might have got a little rowdy. We met some strangers. Gained a little too much weight. <laughs> yeah. Came back, went to work out today, and I lost two notches on my belt, so that's bad. Now, I'm normally about 10 pounds a notch, so it's about 20 pounds that I might have added on. <laughs> so it's a little excessive. But the trip was fun. It was great. So what we did tonight is we decided to write everything down um, and rate breweries based on a couple different things. Um, the quality of the beer overall was a big factor. How good was their service? Did we like the people that we were talking to? Were they nice? And then lastly was atmosphere. Because breweries are more than just places to drink beer. Anyone go to a dive bar and drink a bunch of paps. We actually did that this week. It was kind of cool. Um, but like, it's more than that. In the atmosphere, the scenery, does it play the theme? Do the beers play a name? So we factor all these things in and we rated them. Um, and based on a point scale of 20 points, we came up with our top 10. So we're gonna review those for you. We have two beers um, that were at breweries. And we will talk about those when we get to those breweries. But number one, the best place that we visited on the entire trip, Hansa Brewing in Cleveland, for a lot of reasons. Uh, for me particularly, the beer was fantastic. He was a traditional style German guy, and he made a lot of old style things, and which is great. You know, if you're a fan of Hofbrauhaus, go there, get a Spess beer. It comes in a whole liter. It's fantastic. Number two, don't you make noise. <laughs> number two he was a fantastic guy so we met the owner he's been there since like 1976 he was an animal he just pretty much gave us the whole bar for free he was hilarious he was so much fun great customer service um and la lastly the atmosphere was pretty neat too it was a great building you saw mm -hmm. all the medals he's always won across there was an outdoor seating it was a nice place to hang out in a good part of town um like so he's been there since 76 so he's been doing it a long time mm -hmm. so that's why it was my number one yeah, pretty much same same as Pat, my number one brewery also. Um, it got a 20 out of 20 on our rating system. We both rated it a 10. So like he said, the, the brewer was awesome, gave us a bunch of free beer. One of the free beers that we got, um, we actually brought two bombers of two different years home of because we loved it. We're going to use that for our advent calendar for Christmas. Um, so he gave it to us cold, and then he also gave it to us warm. Highly recommend drinking it warm. Um, so it's Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Um, I forget what style it is. It, it is, is a quintuple, uh, quintuple Belgian-style ale, barrel-aged, yeah, in this, bourbon barrels. This beer was phenomenal. 16%. Um, so good. Yeah. So, so that was the number one brewery. Highly recommend if you are in Ohio City and Cleveland, right on the corner, um, right near Great Lakes, all the breweries right there downtown. Um, definitely check that place out. And one thing that we didn't factor in that uh, we could have at some places was food. And they have authentic German style food there that like their specials and things change. We didn't eat there, so we smelled didn't. Smelled delicious, it. Down there. but it smelled real good. So highly recommend it. Yeah, Merry Christmas. You felt the animal. We got the 2018 version. Lukewarm room temperature was probably one of the best beers we had the entire weekend. It's probably my favorite beer of the entire weekend. Super good. Number two on our list was Noble Beasts. So for anyone that knows Cleveland breweries or know high breweries, you've probably heard of Noble Beast. But I have one particular reason why it was my second favorite of the weekend. Not only were the beers fantastic, um, my favorite was they had a white IPA there. The Velocities Broker, I think is what it was called. Mm -hmm. Super good, super fantastic. But the reason I really liked it is we walked in less than 45 minutes from closing. So they closed at 10, we walked in about... 920-ish, 925-ish, yeah. and I asked the guy if he did flights, he said, because COVID, we don't do flights, I said, oh, okay, um, <laughs> do you do half ports? He said, no, I was like, oh, well, this is getting really upsetting, and at this point, we've already been, before this, we made a walking stop from Masthead, so we were already kind of drunk, and so we walked over there, and I was like, you know what, I'll take one pour of everything, so he lines this up on the left, 14 beers. 
He lines up. It was only eleven. <laughs> he lined up eleven full pours for us right at the end of the night. He's like, you only got like thirty-five minutes, and I was like, no problem. We had our friend Rob with us, and he was like, I can't believe you just did this to us. I was like, we got it. So. Rated them, one, for quality beer, two, for customer service. Anyone that's willing to give me a full pour of everything on the menu, top notch in my book. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, shout out to Bob for uh, sticking with us and enjoying our shenanigans as well. <laughs> and oh, no, but also, fuck you, Bob, for having like 30 alarms go off at 6 a.m. He had an alarm at 6, 6.02, 6.05. We had to drop his phone on his head and like shake him, him like because he had to leave the next morning, so <laughs> so yeah, fuck you, Bob. <laughs> but we got him up on time, so. Um, so number three, third brewery, Arlen's. Um, Arlen's Good Beer, it is in Bowling Green. Um, so we headed down through um, all the way, at Bowling Green was our last stop on Friday. And their lemon seltzer was phenomenal. Um, went down super easy, wasn't overly like seltzery and bubbly. Um, so that was really good. They also recommended mixing it with their cider. So we also did a half and half to see how that tasted also very good. Um, all the rest of their beer was pretty great too. Again, atmosphere is one of the things that we also have been rating. So you walk in here, they didn't have indoor seating because of COVID, but um, they were packing up a food truck. We were there pretty late. And then they had fire pits all around, um, picnic tables spread out all through the back in the grass. Um, there was just people everywhere, and it looked like a great scene. Um, they had bands that will sometimes come and play and stuff, so that, that was a huge factor. That was probably the biggest scene. yard we've seen yeah. the entire time. Great place. Huge. ton of people, good hangout spot. Yeah, especially if you're like later at night, you know, or even like if you want to have like a concert. Mm -hmm. um, next up is Restoration Brew Works. This is in mm -hmm. Delaware. There is really nothing that much else in Delaware, Ohio. Mm -hmm. It's in the, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, so we stopped there for lunch because they offer food, and that's what I'm actually drinking right here. It's called the Small Session IPA. It's 4.8%. I'm going to go ahead and taste it here for you. So, oh man, it's so good. So the Session IPAs are supposed to be uh, lower alcohol than a regular IPA, and it's more of a crushable thing. And that's exactly what this is. This is lower alcohol, 4.8%. But it has so much hot profile and so much bitterness to it. Ignore the dog and the shaking of the camera. <laughs> he's going to be, he want to stay upstairs because he's being a real asshole because he's at the kennel for five days. So just ignore him. But, um, it, so it is honestly probably a top three session IPA that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I might even put it at top two. It's fantastic. And the fun story, we were at Restoration Breweries. We ate dinner and then we left there to go to a place called Phoenix in Mansfield, Ohio. It was like a 45 minute drive, hour drive away. And when we get there, it was, they did a collaboration with Restoration Brew Works and it was Meet the Brewers Day. So we left Restoration Brew Works, drove to Phoenix. We didn't know this. When we get there, we actually got to talk to the head brewers mm -hmm. from Restoration. Fantastic people. And they, we talked about this beer specifically. And the guy said it's his baby. He's been working on this beer for 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Like he wanted something easy drinking, but he wanted something that tasted like a real IPA. So, oh, so good. Yep. I'll even give it a rating for you. Uh, drinkability, <laughs> off the charts, super easy to drink. Taste for style, tastes like it's supposed to. Um, it'll definitely get you drunk. It's going to take longer because it's a session, but my final rating will be a full pour every time. Yep, full pour. Delicious beer. So good. <laughs> um, so number five, Fifth Brewery, Four Katie Creek. Um, that was in... It is Crick. Crick. Four Katie Crick. The only reason Sorry. I correct her is because it's not spelled C R E E K. It's fair. It's C R I C K. Yep. Okay. So that brewery was in Defiance. Um, you pull up, you kind of look, you're like, oh, there's a huge golf course here. Like, are we in the right spot? Um, you drive down the golf course. There's this tiny little like shack looking thing. Um, we walk. When we get there, we're kind of waiting outside a little bit. We have to go to the bathroom. We've been driving for you know an hour, a little over an hour. So we're kind of like dancing around, like we gotta go to the bathroom. Hopefully they open the doors. This guy comes walking out, like looks real hungover. <laughs> so we're like, oh man, poor guy. So we're just waiting for him to come back through to let us in. We're like, we gotta go. So we just walk through the garage door that he left open, go to the bathroom, come sit at the bar. He comes back and he's like, man, you guys are here way early. Like no one comes here 11 a.m. <laughs> like we were like, well, we like to drink, <laughs> so. He lined up some beers for us, um, made us some food, even though the kitchen wasn't open yet, so that was really cool. 
Um, and the, the beer was great. The bartender was awesome. So he was a great talk. It was yeah. fun to talk to him. And they have a hot dog eating contest mm-hmm. there that makes a shirt that says, if you do it and you successfully complete it, you have a shirt that says you're a weenie eating champion. So <laughs> I really wanted to do it, but he was really hung over and he really didn't want to make the hot yeah. dogs. <laughs> we also had, had some more driving and drinking to do that day. So we really didn't want to like yeah. shove our stomachs full of I hot didn't dogs. Eat five giant <laughs> yeah, hot dogs. Yeah, these are huge hot dogs, like loaded with fries and different things. And so. you had five minutes to eat five of them. Yeah. And I just don't think I could have done it at 11 a.m. You would have like choked on them, yeah. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, what do we write next? Tailspin. Um, so Tailspin was an interesting place. Tailspin is in, what town is that? Is that Salina, Ohio? It's so. out there. There's a big lake Salina. out there. Yeah. Um, Salina, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Salina, Ohio out there. Um, if not, it's right next to it. Like, they're all, all these little towns. We went to a bunch of breweries. They're all connected, but they're all different towns. So mm-hmm. it's, it's around there. I can't think of the actual name. <laughs> but it's veteran-owned, and they kind of ran with that theme. So, like, they had, like, American flags. The inside was red, white, and blue. It was in this giant barn. Mm-hmm. And I wish we could have spent more time there. Because it was a cool hangout place, mm-hmm. but we got in there, we got our beers, and then like this wedding party came in. Yeah, there was this wedding. It was real loud. We were like, oh, I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to even be here anymore. <laughs> yeah, we were the only ones not dressed up besides like a couple other bikers that came in when we came in. So I was like, is this place like rented out? We just don't know, and no one told us to go home. So we were completely underdressed. So we stayed there. We drank the beer. My favorite and her favorite mm-hmm. was the Spitfire Ale. It was a mm-hmm. brown ale with maple and pecans. So good. Super good. Usually don't like browns, but this one was really great. The majority of their beer was fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was a really cool place to hang out. And something that, an adventure that kind of happened to us um, that day, and we didn't see them there, but the two stops before that, we ran across this group of people. There was like 10 or 15 people in this party. They were driving around in a party bus. Um, They rented a bus today just so they could go out and get drunk. (laughs) Well, at a place that we stopped at later in the afternoon, we came across them again. And they were like, hey, you guys like dive bars? We're like, "Eh, we like to party. That's what you're looking for. (laughs) So they were like, do you want to meet us at this dive bar later? Not thinking we would show up. We were like, yeah, we'll see. We'll maybe be there about 830 or so. And they're like, "Ah, I don't know if we'll be there that long. I was like, we'll find out. So we stumbled onto this dive bar. I got lung cancer instantly as soon as I walked inside. Yeah, might have, might have got probably something worse than COVID, so. <laughs> yeah, I got lung cancer for sure. There was like smoke filled the air. Mm-hmm. I got four paps. It cost $9. And I gave the lady a $10 tip because that's all I had. Yeah, and it I was like, cash. Yeah. yeah, it was cash only. And I was like, I'm just going to give her a $10 tip and maybe we'll get quick service. Because the place was kind of full. I was like, yeah. I'll get quick service. And then she literally looked me in the face. Like, that's the wrong bill, bud. She's and like, he's like, no, it's Because she you. gave me $11 back. And she's like, you put the wrong bill down. And I'm like. No? I was like, you can have that. She's like, you're kidding. I'm like, no, I'm she serious. She like lit up. She was made her night. <laughs> she bought so much meth with that. I don't even know how much meth she bought. But she loved it. So anyway, we, we hung out there for a, a, not very long. And then they were like, hey, we have to go back to our campground, which is a hop, skip, oh, and a jumping away. And they're like, you guys want to come to our campground and like drink? And we're like, yeah, we came this far. Why not? <laughs> so we go there, meet a bunch of these people. It was really cool. And they had like a tiki bar that they yeah. built themselves at this campground. It was super fucking cool. But the reason I bring this up is because the people that I was talking to in the evening time, we were talking about all the breweries that we did that day. And we brought up Tailspin. And like it was pretty much unanimous out of the, the four people in that group that I was with. That that would be the place that they would go and like hang out in the area. So mm-hmm. it's not just us. It's a really mm-hmm. big, cool hangout spot for everybody around. So yeah, and pretty neat. Fun times. Um, so number seven. Bascule, um, I forget what the whole name was. It was like Bascule. I don't, I don't know. There was a full name. It was like something or other. But anyway, oh, yeah. I think. It, oh yeah, there was, wasn't there? I was just calling it Bascule. Yeah, there was like a couple other words behind it. I don't really remember. It was called Bascule anyway, though. Um, so it's in Lorraine, Ohio. So. Lorraine, Ohio. So this place was pretty cool. It was kind of in like an old little like kind of garage shop type place and parked in the back came in um we also got there right on time i remember because they were kind of like looking at us like what are these people doing and like we walked around thought we were at the wrong door you know they finally let us in so we get in there and this is um nautical theme so it was really cool they have like a whole um panel of like you know the front of the ship with all the little gadgets and things in there and just all all that kind of ship stuff hanging around which was sweet um so we also got to meet the brewer there he was kind of talking to us a little bit which was awesome another reason why we rated it so high and then the beer was great so i had this um it was called paranorm ale sweet potato um amber and so they they pour this beer out i I saw somebody sitting there at the bar with and i was like what's that i want it 
So they pour this beer and then they put in a bunch of mini marshmallows on top. And then they take a little lighter and light them on fire in front of you. Yeah, Bruce Lee. And then you like drink it and you taste a little bit of like the burnt marshmallow with it. And then you taste the sweet potato kind of beer tasting. And it, it was so good. It was like a sweet potato casserole. Yeah. So that was delicious and the brewery was pretty awesome. So. Do you know what a bascule is? No. A boat? It is not. It is a type of bridge that goes like this. So a boat's going to go like this. Oh, okay. Test her knowledge today. She didn't learn much on the trip. There was a there was a cool fish that I did ask him what it was hanging on the wall there though. I can't remember what kind it was. Though. It was a muskie. <laughs> Pretty it was common. mounted. <laughs> she really liked the place. It was super cool. <laughs> I really liked it too. Um, oh, and Tailspin is in cold water. Cold water. Lake okay. Rat is in Salina. So right next door. Same thing, maybe ten minutes away. But cold water. I'd go there specifically. Uh, next up is Astier Brewing, um, which came in number eight for us. That was also in Bowling Green. So Bowling Green was our last stop of the day. And it was two probably top ten. Like two top ten. It was a great place. And oh, I forgot to write my beer. No. Oh, time Sorry. out. Let's go back. Back up. So Erie Ghost Ship. Uh, this was one of the brewer, one of the beers that a couple people that were sitting there at the bar were like, hey, like that's one of their top beers. They have it on all the time. So if you go there, you'll probably see it. Um, and they were like, this is one of the originals and it's very good. So it is one of their brown ales. Um, so drinkability for that one, um, pretty easy to drink, especially for a brown, not over, you know, too heavy or anything. Um, has a good brown flavor, not overpowering or anything. I would say it's kind of, I would probably give it a half pour. I'm not a brown fan. Yeah. So for taste for style, mm -hmm. it's a fantastic brown ale itself. It's full malt body. It even has a little bit of roast on the back end. Um, it fulfills all the brown requirements. Crushable, super drinkable, but brown is a style that is something you really have to really want, mm. or you have to put adjuncts in for making me want to drink it. So I'm gonna give it a three quarter for myself. Yeah, we're used to stouts, so they're kind of a little more heavy, full bodied, and right. flavorful. It's a little less. So Astier and Bowling Green it was a very interesting place. It was all kind of gamer themed. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the big dice are called for Dungeons and Dragons, but that's what their taps were. So they had the dice with like you know the twenty sides on it. Yeah. And their taps came out different points on there. Super cool. Um, they had a big gamer board in the back, so you play with your miniature figures, um, but, which is real big right now, the miniature figure action games that you can play. They had another large table for different kind of gamings. They had a whole row full of gamings. The guy was super friendly. And one thing that they had that surprised me, and I think maybe because it was kind of that like Dungeons and Dragons medieval theme, mm -hmm. but that they had a lot of uh, braggots, which are beer meads and meat. So they had a lot of those on tap, which I was surprised. And they did them well, because they normally yeah, take a lot of time to craft them. Um, and probably the coolest flights out of the entire trip. They were on a battle axe. Yeah. So they were on a, you know, Got a two-pronged axe. axe like. <laughs> and, the, and the glasses were neat, too. They were about this big, and they were about this big around. They were probably at least six ounce pours, mm -hmm. if not eight in and your they flight. they had like a little indents around them. And they had two, they had four indents on the side and then one on the bottom, so you could like hold it and fit your hand just right. They were great glasses. Um, I like the atmosphere. The beer was, uh, you know, was solid. It was okay, but I think the flights really took it over the edge for me. It was super mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. You could also really hurt somebody. Yeah, yeah. There was axes and everything like hanging all around, yeah. and all the medieval swords and stuff. So it was really cool. Super. A really cool theme. Um, so number nine, heavier than air. So this um, brewery, nothing too crazy inside. Um, it's just kind of in like a little strip mall. Um, but you walk in, it, he did have veteran, um, what are they called, like little pins and things? The patches. The patches. They could hang their patch on the wall and he was going to hang up some more and stuff. So he was kind of just sounded like he was getting more decorations and things in there. Um, we did get to sit there and again talk to the brewer, so that was pretty cool. We talked to him a lot. Yeah, he stood there and, and we, were, we were kind of a little, a little frustrated because we were trying to watch our football games on our phone. and. Um, I was watching the Rams game, Pat's watching the Titans game, and he just kept coming over and talking to us, so we just eventually were like, alright, well, screw it, we'll just talk to him. <laughs> well, you never but, want to pass up the opportunity to right. talk to a brewer. So he did come over, and then he actually gave us the double IPA and their triple IPA that he had just brewed for their anniversary, but it wasn't even on tap yet. So we really liked that. He gave us that, gave us some oyster crackers, you know, to rinse in between. Um, yeah. So those were really great beers. Really nice guy. 
he said his son like lives in Alaska now and helps with his Portland. recipe or Portland. Portland, Oregon. Oregon, sorry. He lives he lives in Oregon and he helps him with his recipes and his other son helps him kind of run the brewery and stuff. So that was cool. Yeah, he was like he just did not want to stop talking, which is fine because I never pass up the opportunity to meet yeah. someone that owns a brewery or that brews because there's a lot of people that like craft beer. But there isn't a lot of people that like to talk about craft beer. They might talk about beer that they had, and that's like kind of it. They're just like, oh, this is good, this is solid, I get some of those flavors, and that's it. Mm -hmm. People that really enjoy craft beer, we really like to talk about it. Kind of why I started the show. No one has to watch this video. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I really just like talking about it. So I'm a big Somebody fan. might watch it. <laughs> Somebody eventually may see it. I don't know. But I'm never going to pass up that opportunity. So any owner or brewer or anybody that wants to have a conversation mm -hmm. with us, with them definitely down like endless pint the shirt that you're wearing mm -hmm. that guy so much knowledge he gave us so much information so many things that we're going to try and our own homebrew stuff um we're looking forward to it so mm -hmm. anytime and last on our list and which might be a surprise to a lot of people that are real big into the craft beer community mm -hmm. um is masthead and the reason i say that's a surprise is because masthead is probably top five brewery in Ohio, maybe, depending on who you're talking to or the style of beers that you like. You know, they make some good barrel aged stuff. All their IPAs are incredibly drinkable. Mm -hmm. The reason they are 10 on our list um, is mainly because of the service that we got there and like mm -hmm. who are kind of the atmosphere. So it's a big building. It's kind of more of a modern place. You know, it, there's not anything real unique to it, mm -hmm. um, but it's a cool place to hang out. Like, you know, probably walk around the city, you're going to want to stop. But the service was a little strange. So we sat there, and we had to wait probably five or ten minutes. To and we get were service. at the bar. So it and it's like a Wednesday table, yeah. at eight o'clock, and there's no one really there. Like People were just kind of like staring at us and walking past mm -hmm. us. So the service was very interesting. Um, so that's why it's probably only number ten on our list. But the beer is stellar. Beer and like I said, we went there before we went to Noble Beast, and we tried everything at Masthead. We tried them all. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite was their Raspberry Espresso Torte. Fort, is that you say? <laughs> oh, see, now she's correcting me. <laughs> but um, it was really good. The beer was fantastic. And it was a great place to drink beer. So if you're just looking for somewhere to go and drink beer, if we were just rating this yeah, based like on downtown. beer, that would be near probably top three, top four on the list. Like they did such a good job with their beer. Um, and it's a good good place. Noble Beast, Hofbra House is right there. Turtle right down. Yeah, and they're all water. within walking distance. So you can go there, drink, move around and everything. So it's pretty cool. Um, I have one more beer. This place just opened. They're working on extremely limited hours. Um, I don't know if you can see the can. It's called Muffleheads. Muffleheads. It's in Wakemont, Ohio. They, like I said, they just opened and they work with limited hours. And some days they're not even open on the days they're supposed to because of construction and how things are going. So the place isn't even built yet. It is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> we thought we were lost. Like, we had no idea where we were. There was no wow, signs. we've been driving in the country for 20 minutes at least. Like, yeah, it was <laughs> so impossible to find. And then we stumbled upon it, and it's this big barn kind of looking thing. Very and new. Like, they're still fixing it up and stuff. Brand new, but it has a huge yeah. patio. Oh, yeah. There's under, like, there's a patio, and then there's, like, an under, like, a roof kind of pavilion patio connected to it, and then the barn. Mm -hmm. And then we had a couple beers there because we didn't have much time because it was like an extra stop on our trip. And the beer was really good. Yeah, and I was like, wow, they just started. I'm glad we got to check this out. The place is super cool. If we lived here, we'd probably come here and drink all the time. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do a beer on the show. We did not have this one there. This is their Horsefly IPA. It's a black IPA. I should have brought a glass, though. I don't think I have one. I'm going to grab one real quick. And then, um, so while he's grabbing that... They actually gave us a free koozie with a beer purchase, so that was kind of also another reason we like to collect different things as we're um, going to the breweries. So we like to, you know, Pat likes his hats, we get some t-shirts, as you've seen him wear on the show, and then koozies. Um, but they had a huge fire pit, a bunch of games, you know, cornhole, different things. So we really liked the atmosphere there and definitely would have hung out more if we had time. Yeah, it was... If we lived in the area, we would go there just to hang out. And they almost made our top 10, mainly because of how great the people were and how great the scenery was. The beer, like I said, was really good, especially for just starting out. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try because I wanted to try it. You There's want to try that? There. Like... Definitely not going to try it. <laughs> Put some in a glass. <laughs> Actually. So yeah, like you said, this is their black IPA coming in at 7.5%. Taste this. 
This tastes a lot like the homebrew black IPA that I just made, which is, by the way, I'm a huge fan of. I bet they used Amarillo or Cascade hops in it. Oh, it does, yeah. It tastes you almost should, like, identical. Pour one of yours out and try it side by side. Yeah, we probably would have to. That tastes almost <laughs> identical. So I think we only have one of these, so yeah. <laughs> drinkability, I think it's incredibly drinkable. Tastes for style, tastes like a black IPA. It actually tastes like a black IPA that I just made. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a full pour. I really like it. Do not sleep on them if you're ever in Wake Man, Ohio. Wake at Man, I think it Wake is. Wake Man, Ohio? Wake Man. I don't know where it is. No, it's you in the don't middle know. of nowhere. You probably, you probably will never, never there, get there. <laughs> but it's worth a swing if you're there. But I hope you tuned in. I hope you continue to follow us on Instagram or on tap. I only need like seven more. Yeah, we're getting close. Seven more subscribers to get a URL. So share the video. Tell people, even if they don't like beer, to just subscribe to really help me out. I truly appreciate it. But we don't have a flight today, but you always know happiness is just a flight away. Cheers. Cheers.